Hello everyone, today we're going to be tackling topic 1.7 in the APUSH curriculum, which is called Causation in Period 1. As always, we want to start off with the learning objectives set forward by the College Board. Uh, this says to explain the effects of the development of transatlantic voyages from 1491 to 1607. So we're going to first talk about causation, what it is, and then we're going to tie it back to the objective. And we're going to talk about the effects of the transatlantic voyages, um, the economic, political, and social effects. So to start, what is causation? This is one of the three reasoning processes chosen uh, chosen by the College Board. So we have comparison, causation, continuity, and change over time. And for this unit, the College Board has chosen causation to be the focus. And why these reasoning processes are important is because they are going to show up on your essays. So when you get to the AP uh, exam and you have your document-based question, your long essay question, and even your short answer questions, you are going to see causation um, likely as one or more than one of the prompts. So these really are the cognitive operations that you use um, while, while writing about the curriculum. So there's a variety of ways that you can demonstrate causation on your essays. Um, the first is the easiest, and it's just to describe the causes and or effects. So you might see some prompts that are more focused on the causes, identifying what led to things. And on other essays, you will focus on the effects. Um, but to do both in an essay makes it so that you're more likely to get a higher score. Uh, sometimes you might explain the relationship between the causes and effects. Um, but one more high level way to ensure that you raise your score is to explain the relative historical significance of different causes and effects. So as an AP reader myself, when I see essays that have defined which cause was the most important and why it was the most important or which effect was the most important and why, that's really where we start um, adding in those extra um, points that are sometimes elusive for writers. So the effects of transatlantic voyage. When you're writing uh, a causation prompt, you want to make sure that you have a defined argument, that you have a claim. So here's one taken straight from the um, course outline for Unit 1. European expansion into the Western Hemisphere generated intense social, religious, and economic competition and changes within European societies. So that's one example of a claim that someone could make in that it generated different types of competition. So let's start by describing the economic effects. This really takes us to two of our VITs, our very important terms, which, um, as you'll know, I have a playlist with the most important terms in AP US history that you can check out. But our economic effects are really the Colombian exchange and the encomienda system. So to review, our Colombian exchange is the exchange of goods, the exchange of plants, animals, ideas, diseases, those things that happened once our hemispheres um, had sustained contact. Um, and then that eventually led to the encomienda system, which gave the Spanish or the Spanish took rather, um, uh, through their colonization, they took areas of land and promised to protect the American Indians in exchange for, um, labor. And, um, as you can see up in the graph, you can see that the uh, the amount of um, gold and silver extracted from the New World caused Spain to become an incredibly wealthy empire in this time. Political effects. Um, we see the creation of the Spanish Empire in the New World and thus the destruction of major American Indian empires, including the Maya, the Aztec, and the Inca. As part of the Colombian exchange, we see um, we saw that millions of American Indians died from disease and um, that made it um, more... Uh, it was it was simply easier for the Spanish to come in and take over a group of people that were decimated from the diseases. 
Uh, we also see increased competition between European nations. So in period one, the real focus is the Spanish exploration. But as we move into period two, you'll see uh, competition for other areas of the New World um, by the Dutch, the French, and the English primarily. So the Spanish Empire, this is another very important term, um, the largest and most formidable global power through the majority of the 15th, 16th, and 17th century. Uh, the land claims in the Americas stretch through much of present day Western United States to the majority of the Western coastline of South America. So here you can see um, a map of mid 16th century uh, Spanish empire. So um, this is a term that you should be aware of. You should know how widespread it was in the new world. They did have land claims around the world, but this is really the area um, that's centered in US history. And then to move on to some of our social effects, our effects on people, um, probably the, the two biggest ones that we see is the development of the transatlantic slave trade, um, where we see uh, millions of Africans being enslaved and being shipped over the Middle Passage into the New World. And through the encomienda system, through the transatlantic slave trade, we see a caste system developing. So we see a very rigid social uh, stratification where uh, people that were born in Europe are going to have significantly more power and wealth than American Indians and Africans. Um, and then mixed populations are going to fall somewhere in the middle there. So we see a complete shift in um, who has the power, who has the wealth, who has liberty and freedom um, as our transatlantic voyages took place. Um, here are some more details about social changes. So we see um, the American Indian population um, being significantly reduced, the white population significantly increasing, and our uh, African um, immigrants forced immigration through the enslavement, um, having a very large um, population as well. And this is just in the 16th to 18th century. So overall, if we were going to summarize some of the major effects of the transatlantic voyage, um, we see unimagined power and wealth for many Europeans. Uh, we see trade being shifted from land to ocean, and we see new empires developing, specifically the Spanish Empire. We have the creation of new ethnic groups as um, populations mix. We have conquest, disease, and death for many indigenous peoples, and we have the development of the transatlantic slave trade. So. What we did there is we tackled our learning objective, uh, explaining the effects of the development of transatlantic voyages. So when you're writing, um, you want to make sure that you have your claim. We talked about our claim at the beginning being that there was um, increases in competition. And then we broke it down into three categories, social, political, and economic. So I hope that that was helpful for you for um, getting a little more information on causation, specifically in period one. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.